1991, when I met him um, in Oxford. Uh, he was a year ahead of me, and it was October 1991 when I got to Oxford, and he was the uh, president of the Oxford African Society. So I attended my first public meeting in Oxford, and there he was presiding over a very important debate in Oxford. Black-white relationships. Now you can imagine knowing the man, the sheer havoc he caused during that debate. Um, that's why it was my first time I met him. So here is a man that has traversed the globe quite literally. From the dreaming spires in Oxford to the leafy suburbs of Boston. From Cape to Casablanca, one of the titles of his publications, from Addis to Entebbe, from Tokyo to New York, Jordan to Abuja via Lagos, the white sand from Dar es Salaam to Gabs in Botswana. He has traversed the globe and all the continents of the world, crossed the Sahara Seven Seas. Um, in search of that unstinting, passionate commitment to the African project. Here is a man that was relentless in his pursuit of African excellence. He believed, he still believed, that Africans can do it, but he will not compromise on a number of qualities. First, attention to detail. Second, a passion for hard work. As the two of us like to remind each other, we will sleep in the long run. What's the point of sleeping? We will sleep in the long run. Um, here is an organization, a man that believes in building institutions, a man with a deep sense of commitment to transformation, a fierce and laser like commitment to achieve his goal. A strict and at times ruthless energy. Yes, you heard me correct. <laughs> strict and at times ruthless energy. So, Professor Turok, when I read that pocket book of his on Tabo back, at times I thought he was actually talking about himself <laughs> um, instead of the former president. I just had to get one, that one off my chest. Uh, here's a man with a profound drive for vision and a sense of conviction. So again, welcome to all of you. Um, please join me in uh, applauding the successes and achievements of Dr. Ade Adepacho. Please join the great achievements of CCR and many of it you will see displayed on your tables tonight. So 13 years later, under the leadership of Professor Adamajan, we've seen the production of 18 books. And these 18 books were actually launched later tonight, displayed here on the front table. Um, an illustrious panel has been convened to launch these 18 books for us. We have five speakers, of course, they couldn't find the quality of the speaker. So they asked me to join the panel just to make up uh, for that gap. Uh, but 18 books later, 55 seminar reports later, 32 policy briefs later, and a strong public intellectual profile as CCR did not only try to shape debates in South Africa, but let me remind the rest of the South Africans in the room, but also debates about the rest of Africa. Yes, I know some of you are tempted to say South Africa and Africa, as we are not part of Africa. I know we're very close to Antarctica here, but I think it's important to remind ourselves that there's been a passionate commitment to Africa. So, Director Professor Lansberg, Director Dr. Ade, and the uh, Honorable Dr. Fabs, Professor Turo, who's also Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. New or incoming executive director, Dr. Tony.
Kabor. The International Nations and Cooperation Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, we feel singularly honored and privileged to be invited uh, to bid a goodbye to the outgoing Executive Director of the CCR, uh, Adibajo, and this auspicious farewell. We welcome the Interim Executive Director, uh, Dr. Kabor. Uh, we owe the CCR a deep debt of gratitude for training our public representatives on conflict resolution, peacemaking, peacekeeping, peace enforcement, and post-conflict reconstruction. As we all know, peace is a condition sine qua non for development in the context of which at the agenda 2063, the recently concluded tripartite free trade area and other development initiatives can be realized. There is absolutely no can say that Dr. Adibaldo is one of Africa's great thought leaders, a prolific author, a consummate researcher, and an academic par excellence. Not only is he a friendly tall giant, but his gentle body also proudly carries and incisive intellect, which makes him a towering genius, akin to Ali Mazrui, Mahmoud Mamdani Tabombegi, who mentioned by him. Dr. Adibayo's seminal works and standing contribution is aptly described by Aldo Bajelo, the former UN Special Representative in Mozambique, and this is what he says about Adibayo. I quote, Adibayo's book clearly identifies the most crucial domestic regional and international sectors that make peace operations in Africa a success or a failure. It is an essential tool for academicians and practitioners who want to learn from the past and work from the future. Unquote. To this observation, I can agree more with the general. In closing, once again, thank you very much, Ade. Our committee and parliament wishes you as a great patriotic son of our continent, all of the best in your future assignments. And you go with your big life or whatever. It's very effective, I like it. Thank you very much. You know, if you all know from Shakespeare, I mean, some are honorable and some are less honorable, etc. But in this, this meeting, it gives us the opportunity to recognize the value of the work that you yourself, a decay of Baju, has contributed to not only South Africa, but Africa as a whole, but also to greet his successor, Dr. Carlo, and unfortunately sitting at the same table. And I was much relieved to see colleagues of mine, uh, the Honorable Sangu, and also my mentor, and that is Professor Ben Turok, the Center for Conflict Resolution and so on. It really was the abiding influence and impact constructively on the work parliamentarians were doing as policy contributors in our country that we had the opportunity to benefit from conversation. I don't like this word dialogue because it creates the impression and then cements it that I listen to myself without listening to you. In a conversation, you are forced to listen to the other person. Otherwise, you can't converse. Impossible to. Because how do you converse with someone you haven't heard? And that is indeed what has been facilitated by the Centre for Conflict, um, for the Centre for Conflict Resolution. And that is the opportunity for different stakeholders to come to the party, uh, to the table, and share their views and engage each other constructively. And I remember at the time um, when I first came across the Centre for Conflict Resolution, I was in finance.
And of course I thought, well, you know, finance is the place to be. It runs everything. Then I got to trade and industry. And my eyes were opened. I realized the importance that trade could play in peace and development, in conflict resolution. And one of the most important things I picked up and gained from one of these seminars that the CCR uh, facilitated in Botswana in terms of security in Africa and peace building was that it stood on four pillars. One was development sustainability. The other was human capital. The other one was the importance of good governance, but the African understanding of what good governance is very important. And finally, if not most importantly, the importance of social justice and the linkage between economics and social development. And one saw that so much in the DRC. And many of the books that we've seen published by CCR are really a seminal little library that we all need to keep because it does tell us and share with us where we are going. It is Africa. It is Africans writing for Africans. And that is so very important to get a clear understanding. We see some of the latest works, The Quest for Pax Africana. And believe you me, I think when Carthage was the greatest civilization on earth, there was a Pax Africana, and we forget that. We forget that. And all we are doing, if you like, is restoring Pax Africana. We are not creating it. We are restoring Pax Africana where we work together with development human capital to create an Africa that is great through its people, through its development, and consequently where there is no conflict. And I think, Professor Dr. Dabaja, I would certainly like to thank you for enabling many of us to see this. And I just, just want to recognize an old friend of mine, I can afford to say that I saw him in shorts and t-shirts many decades ago, and that is the Deputy Minister over recognizing your comment. Thank you very much for listening to the few words I heard. And I want to say to Dr. Arjo, thank you for contributing to trade and industry. Thank you very much. I, I want to refer to one person who ought to be here this evening, and that's Professor Adebayo Adebeji, a very senior and respected person who is too ill to be here. made an enormous contribution to CCR because he brought Africa to South Africa. He brought Africa to Cape Town. And he insists on wearing a Nigerian gown because he wants to bring Africa to us. <laughs> and let me let you into a secret. I'm wearing a suit made in the Baden, Nigeria, precisely to honor the fact that Africa has come to Cape Town. Africa has come to South Africa. It's so important. And uh, what CCR, in particular, I call him Ade, what he has done was to remind us all the time the fact that Cape Town, even Cape Town, is part of Africa. Yeah. And not some island. <laughs> to be reminded, I, I'm rather fortunate in that I've spent many, many years running around Africa, lecturing here, where attending meetings and so on. And uh, frankly, I love Nigeria. You see, 
I, I know the taxis at Lagos Airport better than the taxis I think I do. So you know, that indicates the degree of familiarity I have with the rest of the continent. And I think it's so important that Dr. Kabul continue that tradition. Please bring Sarah here to Cape Town and bring the rest of Africa here. We need it so bad. Now, Dr. Kabul, you are going to be responsible for conflict resolution across the continent. But you see, we're living in South Africa at the moment. Conflict resolution is not something foreign to us. I think we need a great deal of conflict resolution uh, uh, the country as a whole. We have turbulent students, we have turbulent labor, we have turbulent political parties, we have a very turbulent parliament, um, which uh, John Trump's colleague didn't say much about, but we know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the center of conflict resolution may find itself uh, involved in conflict resolution discussions, not in actual conflict. That uh, affects South Africa as a whole. I think it's, it's uh, something that we're all conscious of. And 2017 is going to be the turbulent year. That is clear. So, conflict resolution is a major issue. We all have to engage in it. We have to be part of it. And I've no doubt that uh, all of you will be paying a great deal of attention to. What's going on in South Africa at the moment? So, to Ade, we are going to miss you a great deal. Thank goodness that you're staying in South Africa. Thank goodness that you will be teaching at the University of Johannesburg. Thank goodness that you will be paying visits to Cape Town and to us and to the CCR. We need you very much. Okay. Um, Ade, I'm, I'm so delighted to be invited to just say one or two words. Uh, I think it makes a, a, an important contribution, as indeed uh, you have done. Um, I just want to uh, remind people that last week we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the signing uh, into law of our constitution. And I, I say this, uh, well, I, I was part of the celebration because I was a negotiator for the rights so and the commemorative booklet on this occasion is uh, Reflections on the Bill of Rights. But ever since I can remember, since that time, you have made a contribution to the debate around, uh, uh, shall I say, national reconciliation, conflict resolution, and our relationship with the rest of Africa, which was then really possible uh, once we had a democratic South Africa. Uh, on a personal note, you're a wonderful, larger than life character. I've really enjoyed. Interacting with you over the many years, uh, and I'm very glad to hear that we haven't lost you, uh, and that you will be returning from Cape Town from time to time. So, everything in the place, Ali, I will miss uh, your extraordinary, interesting presence in Cape Town. Thank you.
deserve applause. The CCR, I'm sure it will succeed under the leadership of our new director. I wish him luck and I hope that at the I, I can't count the years, honey, uh, that I've known you in so many different capacities. We recently were on <coughs> panels together in the U.S. on his new book on Kabul and Becky, and then we did a panel on Obama's legacy in Africa. Now, is a man of many talents, and he organizes panels on all these different issues, and then he's responsible for so many books. But throughout our friendship, Colleagues, I have always admired him for his his candidness, his frankness, and at the same time the humor that he brings to it. So he takes that edge off just a little bit, and it makes him a wonderful colleague, a great scholar. And I know here at CCR has been a great leader, and I want to offer congratulations to Tony for his taking over, and I know it's going to continue great. So thanks, thanks. I recall from the days when he was lecturing at the University of Zambia and uh, in his book on, uh, on the development in Zambia, it's Not to mention his writings on the politics of liberation, uh, which was quite inspiring for up and coming. Uh, we used to call ourselves organic intellectuals of the revolution. <laughs> so, uh, Yes, indeed. Uh, first, uh, it's a, a great pleasure for me to be associated with the Center for Public Resolution. Uh, I have been attending uh, workshops, <coughs> seminars uh, of CCR, and I was asked to join the board. And when I was asked to join the board, I did not hesitate for one moment to join that board. Um, uh, you know, I don't think I have the courage to describe my name. Uh, he's a man of many talents. Uh, he, can brutal, he can be brutal as I first said. Therefore, uh, hard to describe him. But his passion and commitment to Africa uh, is, is beyond reproach. Uh, I have had the privilege to work with that, not only in Cape Town, but also in New York, uh, and, and also uh, I would like to, in fact, now speak as an Namibian on behalf of our government, to thank Adair for the work that he has done with the Ministry of Defense uh, in Namibia in developing a program for HIV and militants. So, Adair, uh, uh, we wish you the best of luck. We will continue to work with you and thank you very much for your contribution to South Africa. Of CCR associate, a passionate engager, a man committed to Africa in his own way. Deputy Minister of Health. Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, actually one of the speakers pointed out by him to come and speak, and I don't know why he chose me, but we are glad to be here tonight. I divide it to say to you. Uh, farewell from the task that we have accomplished so well. And then obviously going we'll to another task. I'm just worried about you. I am an internationalist, a thinker, a colleague, a friend, an author, and mostly an intellectual of knowledge. First of all, let me thank you for really taking the assignment at the time when you are approached to come and serve. As South, Africa's, as South Africa's academic institution as a visiting professor, you remember those days? And then thereafter taking uh, the role in, as executive director of the Center of Conflict Resolution, CCR, since 2003. It's a long time. But I don't see too much white hair when you go, because usually when people take such tasks, they go white hair very quicker. I met Prof around 2000, and I was just a new member of parliament at the time, coming from Audi, my only geography was just something and nothing else. <laughs> and then you 
come out to Parliament and then they say, sir, in the committee, at that time it was called the, the Committee on Foreign Affairs, not the Protection of Nations. Foreign Affairs, and then I served with John Fabs uh, in the church industry. So those were my two committees that gave me exposure. And then why we had to change the name Foreign Affairs? Because there was this gentleman from Angola who kept saying, why are you involved in affairs? Affairs don't last about. <laughs> So you must be in relationships because relationships last long. So those are professors in English, please help us. <laughs> but it did influence the ASC to change and then to add the department of TFA to change from DEPO, from TFA, and then to DEPO and International Relations <laughs> as a result of that, of that particular form of us in that world. So it was one of those times when we met these intellectuals, students, and others. And indeed, it was at the time when the OAU was transforming itself to AU. The debates were very, very hot at the time. What type of foreign organization we need to now post colonial period was South Africa was the last to be colonized at the time. But also, another debate then emerged the Omega group led by President Wade of Senegal, and then the other group led by Tabombe on map and how the two streams have to be brought together into what we call an airport. Uh, I am wearing a traditional outfit which Chris described as a duvet. <laughs> so, <laughs> South Africa still has a long way to go to yeah. join the rest of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I checked with the former Chinese ambassador to South Africa who is here with us, and I want to start with an ancient Chinese proverb, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step away from home. He actually told me that was from Chairman Mao. And my first step away from home began with my studies, as Chris has said, when we met, doing my doctoral degree on Liberia's Civil War at Oxford. And that was the end of the Cold War, and a pioneering experience that encouraged me to go into the field of conflict resolution as the Cold War was ending. Uh, I then actually came here to South Africa in 1994 as the United Nations Electoral Observer and observed the apartheid's funeral and was fortunate enough also to attend Mandela's inauguration. And I think that's the experience that inspired me to come back eventually. But I spent another year with the United Nations also working in the Western Sahara and then spent five years in New York at the International Peace Institute. And this is where I think I learned about the importance of convening power, of strong African perspectives, publishing work by Africans with African voices that's world class uh, but that can compete with the best research in the world. And we're trying to serve as a bridge between the United Nations and African regional organizations and civil society at the time. And this was a time when Kofi Annan, the Benin, was Secretary General of the UN. I arrived here on the southern tip of Africa in 2003, the kind of return of the native. And it was five years into Tabo Mbeki's African Renaissance vision and all of the around the philosopher King's vision. Um, I think it's important to note that CCR was a strong organization at the time I arrived. I merely built on what had been done by my predecessors and I think it's appropriate to also pay tribute to them. Abhi van der Merwe was the director of CCR between 1968 and 1992 and was very involved in some of the early contacts between the ANC in exile and Africana intellectuals and other groups. And Laurie Nathan took over from 1992, did a lot of the work on taxi violence and prisons and mediation in South Africa, but also expanded the work to Southern Africa to places like Swaziland and Lesotho. And so when I took over, I merely took back to the next level, try to pan-Africanize 
the organization and the staff, the board, and the theatre of what went into the rest of Africa. And I think Chris has talked about some of the achievements, but what we're trying to do was produce world-class research, contribute to policy development, both for African regional organizations and the United Nations. And also, we have a very important capacity building and training work, which have done sustained interventions, not just in the Silicon Swaziland, but in South Sudan, they've trained militaries, they've trained national human rights institutions, and we've done very important work on gender and peace building. I think it's important just to acknowledge the role of the staff. Uh, there's been a tremendous work ethic by the staff. Chris has described it as ruthless, and Karen Wendy as brutal. Uh, you know, being a demanding taskmaster is important because what has driven me is the sense that if Africa is going to be world class, then we can't be world class Africa branch. We have to be world class at that standard. So it's very important that I think the staff, both the ones that are here now and the ones that have left, uh, many of them contributed tremendously to these achievements. This isn't something anybody could have done on their own. And I think that kind of work I think, was essential. And the board, I think, deserves special mention as well. And there is a reason why we decided to launch the books with the board members. It's also to pay personal tribute to them as well. Because I don't think I could have got a better board. Uh, the board was so committed in terms of shaping the vision and contributing edited chapters and going above board, just attending things and providing support. And I also want to acknowledge the Olivi, who was the longest serving board member, and it was on the foundation that he laid that we achieved much of this success. And he was the most important and wisest sounding sounding board that I could have had. Uh, I'm also really pleased that to report that CCR does now own its own building in Mowbray Observatory, worth around 16 million and um, all of you should visit if you have not visited. And finally, I want to pay tribute also to all of our service providers, many of them are here uh, tonight. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure working with all of you, whether it's on travel, legal issues or anything that we've done, we've really appreciated everything. And finally also, we started these public dialogues when we were still on the hidden campus at the University of Cape Town. And we had 10 participants, 20 participants, and over the years we grew it and we now average 100 people at each of our public dialogues. And these dialogues have also become one of the most important uh, parts of the cultural, intellectual life of Cape Town. So I'm also really grateful, uh, finally, to those who have supported us in terms of our public dialogue. So as I ride off into the sunset, I wanted to end with another Chinese problem. May you live in interesting times. But I actually recently discovered it's actually a curse. Thank you. <laughs> because I've spoken about how big um, a pair of shoes I start to feel at the departure of um, Professor Adebayo. Um, I believe that um, I'm lucky um, in several senses. In the first instance, I believe I'm a lucky guy because Ade is only around the corner. So he's not really going into oblivion, but rather he went next door in Johannesburg. So I still think that I will have a shoulder to lean on in times of um, trouble. So Ade, I hope I will open the doors of uh, UJ as well as the doors of your home um, when I get into trouble in Cape Town. So that's the first 
um, set of lucky circumstances. Uh, the second set of lucky circumstances is that Ade is leaving behind a group of very great staff. I mean, I've interacted with many of them, if not all of them, and I know the quality of the people I'm inheriting. And so because of that, I feel really comfortable getting into the big shoes that have been left behind. Because I know, as he has said, and as many other people have intimated, that um, it is because of the people behind the big staff, excellent um, uh, members of staff, that this quality work is um, shown up here on stage today. So that's the second set of lucky circumstances that I think um, I'm coming into. Um, thirdly, I think that um, I still have an inheriting a board that still comprises of some of the greatest minds on the continent of Africa. I mean, you could not ask for anything more than what you have. And so I really feel lucky that um, you know the members of the board are still here, and I hope many of them will continue to work with CCR and to be with us, so that they can have uh, or continue to have this group of intellectual minds from the continent. But I also feel that um, finally, perhaps, that I'm uh, coming into. Um, I already feel um, from what I sense in this room that I am a welcome son of Cape Town. And so, hopefully, um, based on what uh, the Honorable had said, I will come into Cape Town and bring Sierra Leone into Cape Town and perhaps bring Sierra Leone into South Africa and hopefully spread Sierra Leone into the entire continent of Africa. Um, I hope that uh, the history works. I am looking forward to uh, meeting all of you. I'm uh, looking forward to engaging. I'm looking forward to continuing some of the good things that Adi has done over the years. I look forward to the dialogues that you 